In the previous video, I worked out that at a BPM of 140 and an LPB of 4, a line would be 0 0.107 etc. seconds long. And then you could take half of that and take it away from the track delay, which would allow you to cover the full spread of a line and so do random sample timings uh, both before and after the line. You can of course make changes to that technique shown in the video to get a bit less variance if that's what you're after, but I'm going to keep this going forward for this example. But, because I'm doing something entirely different, I want to know something different here, which is how many samples is that time of 0 0.107 etc seconds how many samples is that at 44.1 kilohertz? And the answer is 4725. So for a new song of 140 BPM, let's create a new sample at the sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz and make it 4725 samples long. Copy the silence here, load in our trusty bass drum from the previous example, and you might be able to see where I'm going with this, because this is 44.1 kilohertz. Now, at the start, paste in that silence, and you have this. If we had a way to speed up the silence, change its pitch, make this run through incredibly fast, and at a variable rate, before hitting the bass drum and then slowing down to the normal speed, then we'd have a way of randomly changing the sample start timing. Now how would we go about doing that? Well, in the modulation section, we have the pitch domain. If we had a way of controlling where on the waveform this would stop, and we could vary the pitch, then we could do precisely what I want it to. And, as it turns out, it is a way of doing this. Get the pitch fader, make it unipolar, so it's only above rather than below the zero line, and turn the duration to... Oh, turn the duration to zero. Because what we actually want to control is the delay. Now, uh, put this to times and input up to 1. And you can see what I want to control here. Now, the issue is the delay timing needs to be as small as possible because what we want is the fullest range of the pitch range here that we can possibly get. And that will allow us the greatest amount of variance. As it turns out, if you go too small, like one millisecond, then that's too fast. There's no variance at all. But I found that two is small enough and allows the greatest amount of variance, but we just need to find precisely where that is on the waveform so that it slows down at the maximum value of one and hits right before the bass drum hits, so that it's playing at the normal speed. Now if we mess with this, we can actually hear where that is. That's too far. 72 appears to be right, and we can check that by doing a simple render. And checking the waveform. Yep, yeah, that's really close. Even on the original bass drum, there is a small amount of silence. And there's a small amount more here, but this is as close as we're going to get. And that's actually really good. So, we need to insert some variety. And you might be thinking, oh, it's time for the LFO in random mode. 
That's a good guess, but unfortunately, this selects values at random in a linear fashion. And that is going to cause a problem because if you see on the waveform, that's going to select uh, the amount that is taken from the silence and will be affected by the pitch. And what's going to happen is that this is going to weight things to being played out uh, longer at a normal speed and thus extending uh, the amount of time that is taken before we actually get to the uh, real bass drum itself. So we can't use the LFO and random mode. What we need is to weight things more towards the higher values so that we cancel that out. And as far as I know, there is only one way of doing this and it's with the stepper. I make that unipolar again so that we only get positive values. Put it up to the maximum length so we can get the most amount of steps and variance. And let's go into the external editor and make it easier. Process, create exponential curve. Of course, it's not what we want. So select all of that and mirror the selection. There we go. This is what we're after. This is weighting it far more and exponentially towards the higher values, which will cancel out the problem that I just mentioned. Oops, what's happening? Of course, I've forgotten to put it onto multiply mode. Now, one final thing, put the step below zero to get the hidden random mode. Now this will select any of the steps from the stepper and do this. Now we have a random amount of time here, which is weighted more towards uh, higher times. And so we have everything working as it should. Let's go in, do this, and hang on. One final thing, don't forget to put this onto continue in the NNA so they don't cut each other off. And minus 53.571. That's it. Just like the previous video, you can download this song in the video description. I think these are the only two ways of doing this exact thing in conjunction with the track delay. But if you can think of another one, then let me know and I'll check it out.